Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, show you a dust collection system I put together that I feel may work for those of you with the same setup. It's particularly a work bee using a Makita router. Now, I'm just going to remove my laser mount. I wanted to leave it on just to not make it look sloppy at first. <laughs> Okay, so this is the setup. Basically, it's a two-part system uh, printed on a 3D printer, and the 3D files will be linked to the Thingiverse files that I've put together and shared on Thingiverse. It's magnetically fastened, and it's a two-part system, as I said. The upper shoe is really a simple design, um, but made to be sleek, so that you can adjust the height of this upper shoe as necessary, depending on where you mount your router bracket. If you have a bracket higher for some scenario, you can certainly have more adjustment of this upper shoe. It's a simple design in that it fastens by one quarter 20 bolt. It's simple to put on, just, you know, standard nut and bolt, <laughs> uh, bolt nuts situation there. And you don't have to over tighten it. Once you get a good snug turn on that uh, on that nut, you're good. It's not going anywhere. Now the bottom shoe I made in two parts. I made two versions of the bottom shoe. Version one, we'll say we'll call it version one, is a trench version where that the top part of the lower shoe is flush with magnet recessed holes in it, and I have the holes. Uh, tap down with a countersink cone that allows for the epoxy at the bottom of each magnet to be pulled down there to hold that magnet down nice and strong. So you will have, I put some clearance around the magnet and these are standard magnets, magnets you can get at uh, Amazon or whatever supplier you have in mind. These are uh, six millimeter by three millimeter and uh, eight millimeter by three millimeter magnet in the center. I have a strong one in the very center and then four semi-strong neodymium, <laughs> if I pronounce the correct, magnets. Um, and that's all you really need to hold it in place. It'll center it and hold it in place. The bottom side of version A is trenched, meaning that inside the entire perimeter is a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch wide trench that's three eighths deep allowing you to buy this bristle from amazon again or wherever you can find your your bristle kit and i'll i'll provide a link in the description below as well and i have that in there and then outfitted along the outer side of this also pushed in the trench and glued in is this uh vinyl sheet you could buy at any uh hobby or or um quilting supply store center it could be a michael's or joann's um ac moore if they're still around i'm not sure and i have that going around the outside that ensures a lot of the dust gets trapped and i would say a lot i have not seen any dust sneak past this unit so i'm pretty proud on how well it works i'm sure the key of this is how much i have the bristles clearing the height to allow the the, uh, the work to be done mostly on the vinyl. The reason why I do that is because the brush, the bristles do form a sturdy foundation. So it's hard to press down, giving stress to your, your router on the Z axis plane. So what I do is I cut the, the bristles shorter than I planned to route. So it's gonna be above my, my, uh, my bit. And I rely on the vinyl portion to really do the dust collection. And if it has to squish down further down, in this case, I get about three quarters of an inch of play down until I get to the bristles. That's all I really route. If you need to route more, then cut your bristles shorter. But I like to use the bristles for two things. One, to be a backup, obviously. And two, it'll hold the vinyl from sucking inwards, if you will, from the vacuum effect. So that, that allows you to uh, protect the, the, the bit from eating into your vinyl and also still gives you that suction power that you're getting. Now on this end, you can see I have the bristles cut away entirely. I'm devoting this area to my viewport. 
so I can actually see what's going on with the routing as it's in progress. So with that, it's, as you can see, it's very easy to snap in place. It's in pretty good. I added two little um, standoffs to secure the, the shear st stress on the unit. There isn't much, but I just want to be secure about that. And I take that a bit further on version two, which I'll show you next. Um, I couldn't provide a wall as I do on version two because it would make 3D printing impossible without um, a lot of support and breakaways. And you don't want to deal with that when you're doing 3D printing. I guess some people were willing to do that. I felt it was unnecessary. You could put just these two little standoffs on each side. Just drill them in, glue them in, and you're good. Um, but again, this works great the way it is. I'm telling you, I have fantastic dust collection in this scenario. But the shocker in this case is that the dust collector is really just a... a um, wet vac a standard big box store wet vac and this um laser mount i'll actually have another video on how i made this but it, it also screws right into the bracket used for the router this gives me the ability with this let set up to have a dust collection shoe in place without having to remove my laser mount i have the laser protected with a little rubber cap and whatnot and just held in place when I'm not using it. Now, <clears throat> the dust collection portion is really a standard setup of a of your standard uh, wet vac. In this particular case, I believe this one's a five horsepower. Yes, I think it's a five horsepower unit uh, with a two inch port. Oh uh, no, two and a quarter inch port, I believe. It's either two and a quarter or two and a half. But in any event, it only comes in one and seven eighths and two and a quarter or two and a half, <laughs> one of those two, but it's the bigger one. And I'm using a two inch PVC that I just had to sand ever so slightly along the perimeter to get this just snug in. And uh, with, a, with a long throw, soft elbow, not the tight elbow, the long throw, gives you less uh, friction um, and doesn't reduce your suction power. Goes up along here and then I just did the old duct tape method to make sure that the hose that comes with the one and seven eighths um, uh, vacuums is what's used here the reason why I chose the one and seven eighths is one I don't have a big bulky hose on this end and I wanted to keep that low profile and this hose uh, diameter was the only one I could find that has the rubbery lightweight very flexible hose it's not that plastic hard pvc that you usually get with these uh wet vacs it's one particular model i've gotten from rigid uh the small little guy that does that's, that does provide this hose i suppose you could buy an aftermarket version or an accessory add-on from rigid to get this particular hose i would certainly seek that out this is far better this can go anywhere along my bed with zero stress on that elbow uh, I was thinking about adding a support here, completely unnecessary. Now, the suction power that comes out of this is, I believe, 175 CFM, and that's getting cut down just a tad be between this reducing area here. But really, the amount of flow that comes out of a wet vac is far more superior than that of a um, dust collector. I do have a dust collector, and it's, it's a two-horsepower dust collector, but... It really would be a big hose that I'd have to suspend all the way up top to keep the stress off the Z-axis, and I didn't want to do that. Plus, you'd have a big reducer here that would take away from the amount of uh, clearance. I would likely have had to move this uh, port further away just so it can taper out without hitting my router. In this case, I have no problem, as you can see. So that's the setup. Now, version 2 of the shoe... It's the second option that you could print out. Um, and I chose to use a different medium as far as this, the, the perimeter skirt. And this shoe is not trenched in the bottom side. Forgive the bad paint job in there. I was playing around a lot and then <laughs> didn't want it to look too bad and I painted it. But um, there's no trench in here at all. Instead, I increased the wall thickness, allowing you to add 
a medium of some kind on the outside of the skirt. I chose um, the kid foam sheets that you the kids play with, uh, the, the craft sheet sheets. I don't know what you call them, but I'll see if I can find a link for it on Amazon and send you the description as well below. But it's a really cheap set. I believe I got 13, no, 100 sheets for $13, which is plenty. And those sheets were six, six inch by nine inch. Um, so two, two parts, and I made a complete rotation around the perimeter uh, of this unit with that, with that foam sheet. This is a great medium as well. And I also added inside the, uh, on the perimeter as well, on the first layer of the perimeter, a thick, stiff plastic material sheet. That prevents this foam again from sucking inwards and getting into your, your bit while working. But what's nice about this is I also have that viewport I spoke of earlier, and you also have that squash power. There's no stress at all. You have no stress whatsoever. So while it's doing its thing, there's never stress. One thing to consider, I haven't tried it yet, is perhaps giving another layer of this foam around and slitting it at every uh, uh, other um, offset so that the slits are not in the same spot, leaving it an overlap that will always leave a seal. Forget the glue there. <laughs> a little crazy glue goes a long way, but doesn't look the best. And that's really my setup. As you can see in the version two, in this particular case, because it's flat in the bottom and there's no trench, I was able to use this as the bottom reference of the 3D printer bed and print growing upwards and allowing to make this trench. So now if I take this one off, it's that simple. No, no movement, no play. This particular little routing wall, routing wall <laughs> uh, holds it in place from any sheer stress of the, off the magnets. So the magnets are constantly having that up force, no left and right lateral uh, force taking those magnets off and losing that shoe in the middle of a route. And that's it. Really, that's as simple as that. I will share those files as I uh, mentioned earlier. And I really hope you take the time to print your own. I think you'll find that this unit, this setup in particular, will reduce your dust problems altogether. I've been very impressed with it. I've uh, routed about three-eighths deep so far uh, with the V-bit and made some signs nothing on this area at all. I was about to put some angle angle brackets along here just to protect the channels a little more from dust shooting along, but I'm not getting any of that at the moment. So until I see a problem where it does let some dust escape, I don't see a, a need to get anything else than just the shoe and the, and the vacuum system going. With a very little amount of printing time, it has probably took me a total for all three, I would say it was, let's see, six and seven, and the other one was 12. So 18, 25, 25 hours total to print all of these, I believe, if my math isn't too bad offhand. And one purchase of the, the wet vac, or if you have one, devote it to the system. And PVC, which probably cost me about, I would say $10 together for the two foot that you could buy at the big box store of the two inch pipe. They sell them in two foot lengths as well. And the two elbows, which are a dollar something each, or maybe perhaps two dollars and something each. And that's really it. There's not much to it. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Take care of yourselves. Have fun routing.